Hey guys and welcome back to Tom's Garage and you join me inside the 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid Trek. Uh, so just power the car up as you can hear silent because of the hybrid powertrain. The Trek comes in two engine variants. We've got a 1.8 litre 120 horsepower model that this car is and we also have available a 2 litre 178 brake horsepower petrol variant as well. Uh, if you can appreciate the larger engine has more CO2 and a lot less MPG, uh, so we'll just focus on the 1.8 model today. So this year's a lot of the running gear with the Toyota Prius, which is a very popular car in the Toyota lineup, and they kind of cemented the hybrid nameplate into everybody's mind to think a hybrid junk a Toyota Prius first. As I mentioned, 1.8, 120 horsepower, gets the car from 0 to 60 in 10.9 seconds, which is a little bit slow by 2020 standards. However, uh, you will enjoy about 57 miles to a gallon in the real world. Unfortunately, because of tax, <laughs> everything's the same. £140 flat rate, depending on what model you get, it's always £140. However, uh, CO2 for this car is 113 grams per kilometre of CO2 for the Trek in the UK. Uh, so that's quite good. This particular car has got a nice red pearlescent paint. Uh, it's called Scarlet Flare, and it's a £900 option. But I think it's worth getting, it really sets the car apart. It really goes well with the black cladding uh, that the Trek comes with. And speaking of the cladding, the Trek's actually 20 millimeters higher than the standard Corolla Hybrid. So that's an interesting fact as well. Uh, it's got the same front wheel drive powertrain, so don't expect it to be doing any off-road trips. Uh, if you still want a four-wheel drive small estate car, you're probably best going with something like Subaru Borg that we've previously seen in this channel. But with regards to Toyota reliability, that's probably the reason you would go for something like this. If you're an Uber driver or something like that as well, everybody knows what a Corolla or a previous generation was the Urus. It's quite nice to see the Corolla nameplate while we mentioned that. The car's very soft and comfortable. Uh, it's not the most engaging drive in the world, especially in comparison to something like a Golf for the Ford Focus. But it does have comfort on its side, quite a hushed ride. All cars use a CVT transmission that you don't really hear unless you put the foot down. And then you get that line, which is a wee bit annoying. But just around town, it's pretty good. And today I've been getting 88 out of 100 on my Eco score, so that's not too bad. Uh, 7 degrees outside. We heated seats to stage, I've got it on low today. And we've also got automatic climate control. And speaking of the interior, the Trek models come with this two tone brown and grey contrast interior, almost like tweed. I'm quite fond of it. It also comes with the fake wood which kind of gives us that, that nature vibe that maybe the people are going for a trek we kind of want that lifestyle choice over a standard estate model Just that set of lights, we've got auto hold down here which is handy and I meant the set of lights I give away junction Visibility out is good, we've got rear privacy glass in the trek models and prices in the UK are just over £29,000 for the base spec if somebody's interested in this car uh, I'd also like to say a special thanks to Helensburg Toyota for lending me their Trek. I thought when I seen it in the forecourt, I thought I wanted to do a video on that because I haven't seen this car before out on the road and hopefully you guys haven't either. So the pros for this car, it's comfortable, a good tech for the money, easy to drive, low running costs, everything's ergonomically designed. My only two gripes with it is the fact it's a little bit underpowered, so I'd probably go for the 2 litre variant. And the CVT transmission's a little bit noisy under uh, Hart's acceleration. I uh, put the foot down, as you've heard, it likes to whine. But apart from that, there's a lot going for the Trek. But I might go for the standard sports tourer model if it was myself paying for it, uh, just because you're not going to get anything benefit apart from the 20mm higher ride height. Which, unless you live up a country rain and you're worried about a <laughs> scrape bottom end in your car, you won't be doing anything serious off roading, unlike maybe something like the Borg might be better for your needs. And I'll put some clips of me trying to drive on the grass in this car. So that's what I say. Thanks very much for watching Tom's Garage. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to Tom's Garage below, comment any questions, and I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.